Welcome back. It's Will at Work Time. Today we got the Virtual Boy. It's a um, really weird system. Uh, I bought this new, not when it first came out. I got it when it was being fire sailed. Uh, Nintendo was, you know, abandoning it. And it was kind of a weird time with gaming uh, because. Um, people were um, sort of, you know, in a different mode with um, the transition from 16-bit to 32-bit, and we had uh, a little bit of, um, I would almost say a little bit of burnout. With gaming, it wasn't like the big game collapse that happened back in the day, but it was um, a type of thing where, like, maybe there was too much going on with gaming at that point, and uh, people just were not really keeping their eye on the ball as much as they do these days. So these things were really cheap. You could go to like a toy store or. A wherever they were selling them and uh, I think you could buy one of these for about 50 bucks and I think all the games were ten dollars each going off memory and uh, that was also kind of what happened with the Sega Nomad I bought the Sega Nomad new and it was around that same time I believe and it wasn't really selling that well and so it was pretty cheap when I bought it and we don't really see a lot of that. Yeah, you do see systems come out and vanish, and you know a lot of them are clone systems and things. We might see that with maybe the Atari VCS or the uh, Amico when that comes out. Uh, this is currently June of 2021. But um, a Nintendo system, we got to admit, it's pretty rare. Uh, this is, you know, if you're not familiar with it, it is uh, very unusual. It's a basically a portable system. It runs on batteries. They go into the controller in the back back here. A bunch of double A's. Uh, it has this kind of um, sort of double D-pad digital thing. No analog yet. Uh, Nintendo hadn't introduced that. Um, controller with a couple of trigger buttons down here that are more like bumpers really. And then you would put your head into the visor and you would see a red display uh, and the games are in 3D. So, I'm going to test this. I have a copy of Mario Tennis here that I'm going to um, put in and test it to make sure it works. But um, you guys obviously can't see it, and even if I do put the camera in here, which maybe I'll do that just so you guys can get a, at least a little bit of an idea of what the red is like, um, you can't see the 3D because you don't have stereoscopic going on. Now, there is <clears throat> emulators for this, and uh, you can play, I believe, all of the games for it. And at one time, I personally owned almost every game made uh, for this, both in the United States and in Japan. Uh, but, um, I ran into a money crunch. It's the same money crunch I talked about when I had almost all the games for the Atari Jaguar, uh, at that time. Uh, but, um, and I had a lot of Sega Saturn games. But I had made sort of a mental decision, uh, at that point in my life that, uh, you know, if I'm, I'm going to collect one thing in order to save space and, and, and make sense of it. So it's going to be consoles and not games. So I decided to, you know, unload my games. And, uh, you know, it was late enough that I got some good money for some of them. Uh, not like today, though, with the craziness that's going on. But then again, it's also hard to know if you would really get the money people are asking for for a lot of these games versus... Um, what they uh, people are actually asking for them. So real quick, before I put in the game cartridge 
and turn this on. I do have a brochure we can kind of look at. Uh, the Virtual Boy brochure, and it's like uh, instructions, I guess, more than anything. But it'll kind of show you a bit more about the base unit. I was kind of hoping, well, I was kind of hoping it would have pictures, but it looks like it's just line drawings, and that's not going to help us. Well, there's a one picture there. See that red? It's like how you, that's kind of what you're going to see when you're in the screen. That's to like line things up. Uh, well, anyway, you know, this system works. Like, it, it does make a 3D thing, but it is painful uh, because of this, like, you've got to be kind of hunched over. It's not like a, like a headset. You've got to sort of put this on a desk and then lean into it, and you can adjust it to some extent, and you can um, move the, the the viewpoint around inside and everything to get like a, you know, in focus. Um, but uh, it, you play it for a long time, uh, like 15 minutes is a long time, um, it'll kind of give you a headache. It, it's just really not a, a really good experience. And, and it's really unusual, because Nintendo always tried to make really good experiences and I, I don't know what happened with this thing like I, I feel like there's a there's a hidden story about the virtual boy because it just doesn't seem like something that they would have it's a toy and not really a game system and it just doesn't seem like it was well thought out in terms of you know maybe at first this was going to be like a helmet and then they were going to, you know, they were like, well, this is too heavy, you know, and we could only get it in one color, and, um, and they still went for it, you know what I mean? Like, they, they weren't like, well, you know what, technology's not there right now, why don't we, why don't we wait on this? They were like, instead they were like, no, we gotta make the Virtual Boy work, you know, Virtual Boy all the way, and, uh, they, you know, to their credit, they made a bunch of games for it, but... Okay, so that's probably about as good as I'm going to get. I could try focusing it. Uh, you're not going to be able to see everything. Because um, you need both things and special vision. But let's hit start here. You can kind of just get an idea of the red and the flicker that's going on there. Let me... Um, Yeah, so that's the tennis game you're seeing. I wish I could zoom this in more for you. It's such a risk picking this thing up and bringing it closer, but I'm going to try it. See, so you can kind of see in there. And you can see tennis. Tennis. Yay for tennis. So it's certainly no adventure vision. There's me swinging bonk. Somehow able to play this while I'm barely showing you on the screen what it looks like. <laughs> Not playing it well though. And you can, of course, move. Etc. So, you see, it does create a, a 3D effect, and you do have decent graphics in the sense of what it is, but it's, it's a black and white kind of uh, display. So, it's, uh, it's limited. <laughs> say the least. 
Um, and if you stare at that crazy black and white stuff long enough, uh, you're going to go insane, basically. Let me drop this down. <coughs> so, you know, uh, Virtual Boy was a failure, and probably notably, I would say, Nintendo's largest, uh, at least off the top of my head. I mean, I certainly don't want to talk about, like, their stuff previous to the NES. Like, I don't know how their Pong systems did or anything. But, um, the, uh, Virtual Boy, really unusual. They tried something new, and I give them credit for doing that. But it just didn't work out, and, uh, it's a shame. But it is unique. It is 3D. It is not the first 3D um, we had uh, the Vectrex actually sold with a 3D viewer, and of course the Sega Master System had shutter glasses uh, for some 3D games as well. Uh, and uh, in you know, uh, one was black and white. Master System was in color. Uh, Atari Jaguar did show 3D Missile Command at a trade show, uh, but never got anywhere with it because they ran out of money first. And uh, so it's always been around, and of course we eventually got to the 3DS, and now we have, you know, um, Oculus, Rift, and um, PlayStation 3D. So, you know, 3D definitely has a place in gaming. It's still kind of being worked out, and, and, and not really the AAA type games that everybody would love to see, uh, but there are some good ones. And uh, it continues to evolve and get better all the time. And, you know, before long, it, maybe it'll become one day the, um, the way we all play games. But uh, strapping helmets to our heads and things like that, it's got a long road for um, casual consumer adoption. Anyway, Virtual Boy, it works. Uh, I'm glad to see it's still, uh, still functional after all this time. It's, uh, it's a good quality product, Nintendo. Fortunately, it didn't really um didn't really appeal to people all right that's it thanks for watching we'll see you next time have a good one